Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Kinnan and I have with me Reverend Tom Cook. How y'all doing? We are excited to study the Bible with you tonight. We're in another installment of our uh, study called What Are We Waiting For? It's Advent and uh, boy this is a really unique Advent um, this year <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say the uh, least. It looks a lot nothing, different. Nothing like I've ever had. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nope, it's been very strange. Uh, uh, my family said, uh, you know, we, we didn't get to get together and do all of the things that we did for a Thanksgiving. How are we going to handle Christmas? And I'm like, the same way. Exactly. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a strange year this year, but um, I'm waiting to get back with them. And I told her next year we're going to knock it out of the park when we can get back together. And so... Uh, um, I just think that uh, I think it's very interesting uh, that we're in this series uh, right now during this time. Uh, we're going to be talking about the story of Jesus's mother, Mary, uh, and how she uh, goes to her cousin's house and uh, and they have a little run in together. We'll be reading out of the Gospel of Luke in the first chapter. And uh, Tom's going to read verses 39 through 45 uh, for us and, uh, and kind of get us acclimated to uh, this story a little bit. But what we're going to talk about is <clears throat> the fact that there was, this just seems impossible, all of this. You know, we've, so far leading up to this story, Tom, we have to buy that there is an immaculate conception, yeah. unheard of. There is a... Um, <clears throat> there is a, a God who is a human. There is a... Um, Angel that appears. There are messengers, yeah, from, from the heavenly realm uh, that keep appearing and giving all these instructions and foretelling all of these things. Mm -hmm. We have kind of a scandalous uh, relationship going on. I mean, it, all of this just seems really um, impossible. So... How do you get from this kind of wild, bizarre story on the surface to this <laughs> meaningful and deep faith in Jesus Christ? I think that, that just seems like a big, long journey to me. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a jump. <clears throat> it is. And, uh, you know, I've heard uh, people say, I just don't believe in the, in the virgin birth. I just, I can't. You know, how, how does that happen? I said, well, you know, I know scientists that clone sheep. So if a, if a human can clone a sheep, you don't think God can create yeah. a human? Yeah. So, you know, it's a leap. It yeah. sounds impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. I, I think probably the, the biggest evidence that we, that we have to kind of hold on to is the narrative itself, the story. Um, and so these stories are ancient, um, and there's a structure to them, and there is a reason why they appear where they do uh, and they've been thoroughly vetted um, and so I think it's very interesting that you know that God would give us a written manuscript that basically details who Jesus actually is because Jesus is the word and so <laughs> I think it's very interesting that we're provided a document to evidence the witness and wonder of the, the Christ. Right. So we're going to unpack this, and we're going to start in, in uh, Luke 1, and uh, we're, we're about to uh, see how Mary encounters her cousin. I'm going to be reading from the first chapter of Luke, 39th through the 45th verses, and I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. That's the, that's the Bible that the Methodist Church uh, likes to use. You may have a different version, and the words may be a little different, but I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. So if you've got a Bible app, you want to read along, Please do so. Here we go. In those days, Mary sent out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy, and blessed is she 
who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And there it is. You know, it is talking about how, again, this is evidence, more evidence that God is real uh, because the things that have been prophesied come true. That's always uh, how I vet whether a prophet's a good one or not, is what they said right. <laughs> you did know? it happen? Yeah, did it happen? Yeah. And so, <clears throat> so it's interesting because now you have two pregnant women because Elizabeth is also pregnant. Of course, she's pregnant with John the Baptist, um, the one who would prepare the way for the Messiah and who would encourage Israel to repent and get their hearts turned uh, toward God. Um, and so we talked a lot about that last week in our segment um, uh, that kind of unpacked him. And so, uh, but here we have these two pregnant women. And now here's another like seemingly impossible thing. You have a fetus inside of a, a one woman leaping for joy at the mention of the other one. And so that just, it just seems very... It, it does seem impossible, but what's, what I think it did, though, for Mary was when Elizabeth tells her this, it gives her confirmation mm. of what she's been going through. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes God does impossible things to give you confirmation, yeah. to say, you know, things have happened in my life that I never would have believed happened, mm -hmm. and it's just more evidence that, that God's with us. Yeah, and, and the more I think about it as you talk about that, you know, I do remember when we were pregnant, I do remember being able to go to Rachel's belly and to say things or pat or, you know, uh, and, and kind of stimulate a response from the baby and stuff. So I guess it could happen. Uh, but it just, it just, the whole thing, you have to believe a lot of like things that seem impossible in uh, order to get there, right? Well, I mean, just the fact that of the virgin birth is, seems impossible. But, you know, Elizabeth, was old. Zachariah was old. Oh yeah, his mouth is shut in this moment. Yeah, that's like right. he's been still shut because he laughed at God and God didn't like he that. Didn't, he didn't believe. So he, yeah. did, he didn't believe and so he got he got the big you, you won't be um, able to speak. But, zipper lip. But Elizabeth was was barren. They said she you know back then if you were barren, if you didn't have children, you were you were cursed by God, yeah. but you had done something wrong, you had sinned. That's the way they thought. Mm -hmm. But if you read what they say about Elizabeth, it says she, they were, she was righteous. Mm -hmm. So through no fault of her own, she was going through this struggle. Yeah. And then God miraculously gives her a son. Yeah. So here we go. Another impossible, seeming impossible thing. So there's a lot of impossible stuff happening in this narrative. And so, you know, uh, for Mary and those around her, this idea of this long-awaited Messiah living inside of her. And you know, she's thought to have only been in her early teens yeah. at most. Yeah, maybe middle school. And so, you know, that's, that's got to be an overwhelming kind of uh, feeling. And it, it, it would seem like to me that if I were in her sandals, that it might be because they didn't have shoes back in the that Jerusalem, you know. Uh, I call them Jerusalem cruisers. <laughs> but, but but if I'm in her sandals, I'm I'm thinking this is a challenging moment to 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 be carrying the uh, Son of God, and so it might have seemed to me a little po a little impossible at first. And I just wonder if if she felt any of that. Yeah, it, initially, when the angel comes to her, she doesn't argue with him. She just says, let it be, mm -hmm. as you said. But you know over those next nine months, she's thinking, oh, how <laughs> yeah. can this be? Yeah, so let me ask you this. Like, have you ever come to believe something that you once thought seemed impossible? Oh, yes. Like what? Well, the, 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 I, I can... I guess I can think of a, a few things, but but when I'm when I'm doing when 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 I had a had occasion in in my business that I would never have dreamed that I would have started in 1989 and and grown to what it, where we are. And I'm, I don't say that, but but 
I pray for my business every day. Yeah. And and I would have thought it impossible to be mm -hmm. where we are today. I mean, I you know I was a C student. At, well, not really even a C student. I was more of a C minus student. And <laughs> and to get and to get where we are, where I am today, you know, with, with my business is one thing. The other thing, I just I I prayed. I, I, I felt the call to ministry. Wanted to be a minister. Wanted to be here at Broadmoor. And I didn't think that would ever happen, but it, it did, you know, mm -hmm. here I sit. So, yeah. and that's a problem for you, I know, because Boy. <laughs> he's hard to work with. He's, he's <laughs> actually really easy to work <laughs> with. I love him. But I tell you, you know, as you're said, they're talking about it. I was thinking about my experience as a, <clears throat> as a second career pastor, right? I mean, yeah, I also yeah. had a business like you, it was entrepreneurial and, and it was thriving and doing very well. But I knew that to fulfill the, the, the thing that God was calling me to and to do that within the Methodist Church, it yeah. meant I would have to go all the way back all to the first day of school. Yeah. And so that meant I not only needed one degree, I needed two. You had to get your BS first, <clears throat> right? Yeah. I mean, that, so, that had to be literally, you thought I had to think that was impossible. You got to get your BS first and then your master. Yeah, and let me tell you, I I never would have dreamed that, and I you know I wish that my mother would have lived to have known that that happened, because she would know that it was only by the grace of God, and to hear that you know <laughs> that I went on and got a master's degree from SMU, she'd have been so proud, and right. and and I still can hardly believe it, yeah. uh, you know. But we were poor growing up, and so you know the idea of of, of having college educations, none of my family had them, you know, and so it was a, it was a first for us to think that that was going to play out that late in my life was um, was unbelievable to me. I think that we should we can all look for impossible things to happen too, because I mean, for example, Elizabeth was old, she was barren, you know, she thought it was impossible. Even in her old age, something that she thought was impossible was made possible through God. Mm -hmm. And that can, it, you're never too old. She also probably thought it was impossible that she was going to get to go through her whole pregnancy with her husband's mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably not only thinking that was impossible, she was probably really yeah, grateful yeah, for yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. An extra blessing. <laughs> so, once that once Mary starts wrapping her mind around the fact that the impossible things are happening, she has to wait, and that's really kind of the the under the the the, the overlapping theme of our of our study is this idea of waiting and what we're waiting for. She has to wait with the Son of God inside of her, pregnant with the Son of God, and. I'm sitting here try, like trying to play that through my mind, like what a day in her life looked like. What would the know? anticipation be? Or what know? would she be thinking as a, as a young teenage girl who all of this stuff is happening and it's coming true. All of these, all of these things that these messengers and, 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 and angels and, and, and all of these things that have been said uh, are coming true. And now she has the knowledge of knowing that the impossible thing, the immaculate conception, the impossible thing, the birth of the Savior of the world, the Messiah, and it being her, like she, you know, like she's <laughs> the winning lottery ticket here, right? But, but also that had to come with a tremendous amount of weight to it. Anxiety. I mean, Tom, I, when Olivia and Caleb were born, I couldn't even put them in the back seat of my car and take them home for fear <laughs> that I was going to, you know, yeah. have a wreck or something on the way home and hurt my. Yeah. Ch I remember like, driving it was really slowly, taking both of my kids home. Just, oh yeah, you know, hands on the wheel, gripped. The only thing scarier than that was after we got home with Olivia. Rachel told me I needed to go to Burlington Coat Factory and buy her a breast pump. And I was like, what on <laughs> earth? Like, that is impossible. Like, but, so that was, the, that was the most terrifying thing. Uh -huh. But, you know, for them, I mean, this had to be crazy. I mean, it affected her relationship. She, Joseph had to accept all of this, yep. you know. And so now she's got... You know this thing happening with the interaction with Elizabeth and and their baby and Zachariah over there with his mouth. I mean, there's just 
a lot to this, but if I'm sitting there thinking about what she did to deliver Christ to us in this world, I mean, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah, we, we, we tend to sanitize it. You know, we talked about that earlier before we started today. Yeah. We tend to sanitize what she was going through. Mm -hmm. It was a typical pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And she had to get on a donkey and travel to Bethlehem. Yeah. Can you imagine, you know, a nine months pregnant trying to do that? And feeling like you've got to protect the, yeah. the Savior of the world, right? Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that would be, I'd be stressed out. Yeah. It was totally just a would. difficult thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just difficult. Mm -hmm. You she didn't get an epidural? No. <laughs> No sanitized operating room to have her baby in? No. Nope. No midwife or, Animals. or uh, what do they call them? A medulla or what, what's it called? Oh. A doula? Whatever it's called. Anyway, none of, no, one of the, no, no spa bath to have the baby in or anything. We're just talking straight up barn. Yeah. Cave. Yeah. yeah. You know. Make you anxious. Whew. So, but yet God puts Elizabeth in Mary's path. And what does, Mary, what does Elizabeth do? Affirms her. Yeah. That's what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that Elizabeth affirmed her and is like, blessed are you. And, you know, like it just goes into this whole beautiful uh, section of the scripture. It says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Oh, my God because she's filled with the Spirit. These are the words coming out of her mouth. I mean, this is, this is an amazing scene when you really start to think about uh, how that moment must have really been played out in real life and what these characters must have, you know, that, that aren't, yeah. that aren't, that aren't a, a storybook, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, but these are real life people going through the experience. I mean, this is a, yeah. this is a big uh, moment. And so God uses Elizabeth though to affirm this young girl who's pregnant with the Son of God and then like just listens to her testimony and blesses her and affirms her for where she's at. Yeah, yeah. Which had to be like, you know, like I'd, I'd feel some relief. Calming for Mary. Because the rest of it feels tense yeah. and intense, you know. So that's, that's really very um, interesting to me. But you know what? I think if we think about it, I think that when, when people in our lives and, and like in the situations that we mentioned about the impossible things that we experienced in our own lives that came true, right. I think so often we are pregnant with the possibility of Christ. And then someone affirms us. And that can feel like such a game changer. And so I have to say, like in my own story, you know, I had leaders in the church who were assuring me and cheering me on that, yes, this is going to be hard and it's it's going to require tough. a big sacrifice, yeah. and this is a huge commitment. But this impossible thing is possible. It's the only way I feel like I would have gone through with it, you know, in my own life. And that has to be how Mary's feeling, too. Yeah. It makes you think, what I think is, who can I affirm? How can I yeah. help somebody, affirm somebody through what they think is an impossible situation? And there's the waiting. That's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for these opportunities, right, as the church to affirm what seems impossible. I mean, I have seen some scallywags walk into the worship center, right? <laughs> and just kind of you think, oh, my God, there is just no, there is just no turnaround for you. And then, boom. All the, all the next thing you know, these are Sunday school teachers. And, and, and the, o over some time, God does a miraculous work in people to transform them. Yeah, I've been in a Bible study with a couple of guys now for, I don't know, 20, 25 years we meet. And one of the guys in that study has got kind of a storied past. And uh, when I say I'm in Bible study with so-and-so, it's like, who? I said, yeah, really? that's the same guy. <laughs> He's different now. Christ is changing. Isn't that something? Yeah. 
and you would have thought that was impossible knowing him in his earlier life. Yeah, but you know what? What's what's interesting too is that it's almost assured because as you read through and you become familiar and you study the Bible like we're doing here, you start realizing that Noah built an ark in a desert. You start to realize that Peter walked on water for a little bit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you start to realize that all of these characters, you know, that weren't supposed to have babies had babies and that weren't supposed to, I mean, Abram and Sarah, they, you know, they were oh, in that yeah. same boat and, yeah. and now that same camp. You, you start to realize that every story uh, has this quality to it, that things that seemed impossible, like it was impossible for Job to bear anymore. It was impossible. You know, every story has this impossible tension yeah. in it. And I think that's true of our lives yeah, as well. Through God, all things are possible. Wow, yeah. that's strong, man. So when we as the church can do that really effectively for someone. What do you think the result is? Well, it's changed life. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, there's a, when, when you can have those examples mm -hmm. and you can affirm somebody that, that, that is going through something, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it changes their lives mm -hmm. for the better. It helps them take that next step toward a life centered on Christ. Amen. And, uh, and I think it's, it, it, you know, the Bible's full of those stories. Mm -hmm. And we read those stories and, oh, great, those are Bible stories. But it happens every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people whose lives have been dramatically changed. Yeah, uh, I agree, Tom. And, you know, a kind of a, an Advent way of, of articulating that is that we get to witness and see the new thing that God is giving life to. And that's what happened in the Christmas story with Jesus Christ, Amen. is the new thing that God was doing took place. And it seemed impossible, but it was real. And the same is true today. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this opportunity to sit and and just meditate on your word and, and consider how that intersects our lives. And Father, I just, we are awed by you and, and by how you make things that are impossible, completely possible. God, we believe so many things that are untrue. Help us to believe what is true. And that is, as my brother so beautifully said, that all things are possible through Jesus Christ. And so in our waiting this Advent, I pray that you would help us to be people of affirmation for others, God. And that we look at each person that we encounter as someone who is pregnant with the possibility of Christ. And God, help us to be Elizabeth to them, Lord, and to affirm them and to encourage them in their faith and let them know that everything that they thought was impossible is possible because of who he is. And I pray that in his holy name. Amen. There are many ways that you can give toward the mission of Broadmoor. You can go to broadmoormethodist.org slash giving to give safely and securely online. You can text BE MORE to 73256. And of course, you can also mail checks to our physical address at 10230 Molly Lee Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70815.